Our lesson today is entitled Love One Another and is found in 1 John chapter 3 verses 11 through 24. This is Sunday school lesson for August the 11th, 2024. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 11th verse of the text and it reads as follows. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Again, what love one another is our subject. So the aim of this lesson is examine John's message about loving one another and affirm the fundamental uh, discipleship principle uh, for love for God and others and express un unconditional love to others. This is my YouTube channel. I ask you please hit the subscribe button <clears throat> And notification bell and get my lessons automatically please like my lessons and please share my lessons and leave me comments all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you oh let us pray Heavenly Father we're grateful that you cause your people to assemble themselves again to hear a word from you and we are just grateful we're grateful for this love that we have now going to get a better understanding about your love and how we should approach each other. Right now, Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins, wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. you. We surrender our will to you at this moment, Lord. Use us as your humble servants. Send us to you teach the Holy Spirit to guide and direct our journey this moment. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So again, with persons, Cain and Abel, that is mentioned in this text today, and, and so Adam knew Eve, that he and her had relations, and this woman, that, that one Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain. And she said that God has given me a man, that's a boy, a child. And she said, I have gotten me a man from the Lord or with the Lord. And, and she bore his brother Abel as well. And Abel came, became a herder of sheep, while Cain was a tiller of the soil. And, soil. and it happened in the course of time that Cain brought from the fruit of the soil an offering to Almighty God, right? And, and Abel, too, brought forth from the choice firstlings of his flock. That's the significant point of the difference in these two offerings. And the Lord regarded Abel's offering, Abel and his offering, but did not regard Cain and his offering. And Cain was very incensed and he fell to his face and Cain said to Abel, his brother, let us go out into the field. And when they were in the field, he rose against Abel and his brother Cain killed Abel. That is the story of Cain and Abel found in Genesis. Next one. So this letter that John writes to this this church, these churches, and he and he writes this letter, and it was written to the members of the church of Asia Minor, and especially in Ephesus. That's where he was positioned. And this epistle served as a reminder to the children of God to love one another. That was a commandment that Jesus left with these disciples at that last supper. And, and the apostle John was prepared to show the churches how to put the love of God into action. The commandment to love is an expression of how Christ's disciples should act. This love has been spread and spread, sh shared above by the Holy Spirit into their hearts. And without showing love towards others, it is doubtful that no one can really say if or he or she really has this love that John speaks of. Next slide. So the purpose of this letter is to bring us to a better relationship with Almighty God. That John begins in the center of the with the center of this relationship which is Jesus. And and, and it's an invitation to relationship to do that which we have seen and what we've heard along our journey in this life and what we've learned from scripture as well. The result of, of, of this relationship is that these things that he writes about is that we should, if we do them, we'll get this joy. And he says that this, the sin nature, the sin and the nature of God, that God is a light and in him there's no darkness, but we're the ones who are dark because we are the ones with the sin. And, and God's sinlessness 
and our relationship with him. And if we say that we have fellowship with God and we walk in darkness and we lie because we're not in fellow, true fellowship with him, then we practice the truth. We're lying. And that, that there are blessings of walking in this light, in this light of God. And the presence of sin, the confession of sin, and the cleansing from sin. If we say we have no sin and we deceive ourselves because there's no truth in us. So John tells us that if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him, God, a liar. And God's word is not in us. That's what John teaches us in this epistle he writes to the church of the Asia Minor. Amen. Let's move on. So these disciples that uh, that, that that followed Jesus, this is a um, um, a chart that shows the uh, how each of them died. That they were all the apostles. That they 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 all had a life, and they went forth preaching the gospel. So in the timeline of the events that happened, Peter died. He was crucified. And, and it's significant that Peter was crucified. He was crucified upside down. He said, no, you cannot crucify me the same way that Jesus was crucified. And Andrew was scourged and, and James was beheaded. And John, I'll get to John in a second. And, and Philip was crucified. And Bartholomew, he was beaten and flayed and crucified up, uh, uh, head side down. And Thomas uh, was lanced. And, and Matthew was axed to death. And James was thrown down. Uh, from the temple three floors down he did not die and they wanted to throw him down again but they decided to just club him to death um, and Thaddeus was crucified and Simon was crucified and and Jesus Iscariot we know what happened to him he he betrayed Jesus and he was hung and, and Matthias was stoned and Paul was beheaded and all these things happened long before this ending of this period of time that we're talking about today that John is the one he was in Ephesus now that he would not die and he would still be alive here at this timetable of this writing of this letter and we'll get more into that and magnify that along these next few slides amen let's move on so if you see that these disciples they were not ashamed of the gospel they, they, they preached the gospel with fervor and they took it and they all lived a martyr's death. They all died in different places. They all proclaimed the, the gospel. They, they saw what they saw. They heard what they heard. And, and Jesus told them what to do. And they went to the uttermost parts to preach the gospel. The command that Jesus gave them for they are not, they were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. I am not ashamed. Amen. Let's move on. So in this timeline of events that leads us up to this letter today, that, that now these disciples have gone and they've done all these things and most of them have died before this period of time. That they're, they're that temple that, that, is, that we know that the centerpiece of Jewish life will also be destroyed in 70 AD. And that by this time, all, most of all of those, but, a, but maybe two of uh, those disciples were still alive and and Jesus had predicted that that temple would fall just as this Christianity is growing they're preaching the gospel to the other most parts of the world amen let's move on and this apostle John he rose to a position of influence in a rapidly growing movement of this Christianity is spreading throughout this region and to this other parts of the region world and shortly after the destruction of this the Jerusalem temple by the Romans in 70 AD that he would move to Ephesus this modern day Turkey that we know now and John became the pastor of the church at Ephesus and he had a special relationship with uh, that church in Ephesus and other churches in the area and John's brother James was the first apostle to die so he had long died and on the other hand John would ultimately become the last to die and he would be the only of all of those uh the, uh, apostles i share share with you before that would die from natural causes he had, had died of an advanced age around the year 100 a.d and i share with you that all of those disciples were most all done died by 72 a.d and while in ephesus ordered by the roman emperor Domin uh, domitian that he ex exiled John to an island called Patmos. And if you know the story, 
and they tried to kill him three times. John would not stop proclaiming the gospel just like the other guys who was not ashamed of the gospel. They tried to kill him three times. They even put him in a bat of boiling, boiling oil and it didn't even phase him. So they had to exile him to the island of Patmos because they couldn't stop him from preaching this gospel. And it was this cave and this apocalypse that he was, was cast in. And there he wrote uh, these letters and also wrote the the book of Revelation. This book of Revelation was given to the Apostle John, where John recorded what God, what Jesus told him to do in this book. And 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 uh, and, and this is ex and John also preached the uh, I wrote the uh, the uh, uh, the Gospel of John and these three letters of First, Second, and Third John. Amen. Let's move on. So I share with you a second ago that he was in Ephesus, where is this Asia Minor region. And then in this island of Patmos is in that region between Greece and, and, and Ephesus, where he would be exiled. Amen. Let's move on. So that's our background. About 11 minutes of background. Let's get on into this lesson. Amen. So... John chapter 3. And we start here in uh, further into this lesson. I just want to share with you the introduction to this text. John tells us what sin is in this uh, chapter. And it's a deliberate breaking of the law, which a man knows very well. They know what, what's right and wrong. That's, a, that's what sin is. Sin is to miss that mark. Sin is to obey oneself rather than obey God. That we are, that's that, that, that in, in us, that ego, that, that, that self-centeredness. John also tells us what sin does. It undoes the work of Jesus. That Jesus, Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he und we undo that when we, we, we sin. That sin brings us back or takes us back, uh, takes back what Jesus came to abolish. That was he came to abolish the sin. That we go back like the dog going back to his vomit. And, and John tells us what sin, uh, why sin is. It comes from the failure to abide in Christ. And that's where we were last week, that abiding, I share with you, a magnified this ab abiding as well along this journey today. And it simply means this, that so long as we remember the continual presence of Jesus, we will not sin. But when we forget this presence, we stop being connected to him, to this word, to our the people within our, our circle that we sin. And that's what happened even with that one Cain, that he became separated as well let's move on amen so again to continue this introduction this john tells us where sin comes from it comes from the devil and the devil is he who sins and and if we were and he does it like it's a principle or practice of what he does and we again he was uh, contrary to god and he he had this thing that he wanted to be above god so all that he does is contrary to god and if we we sin for pleasure, that pleasure we think that feels and makes us feel this pre that that we think or we feel will bring us this pleasure, and then this devil, uh, devil sin is a matter of principle that I shared, and and the, the sin is to obey this satanic power instead of God's power, and John tells us that sin uh, is conquered is conquered because Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil, Jesus has broken the power of evil. Uh, by his help, or Jesus has broken the power of evil, and by his help, that same victory can be ours. That if we rely upon Jesus, we can break the power of sin as well. And anyone who has been born of God does not commit sin because God's seed abides again, rests in him, it remains in him, it's connected to him, and we cannot be a consistent, deliberate sinner because the Holy Spirit convicts us because he has been changed, us, because we have been born. Of God, a change happens. And John is trying to help us to understand the sin in these two last slides. Let's move on to our text. Amen. So the lesson that I'm sharing with you today is a lesson that I did about three years ago. And at that time, it, the name of the lesson was called Confident Love. And, and, and it's the same exact text, the same exact essence and, uh, and, you know, what I do is much different than maybe a lot of the teachers here on YouTube. You know, I, I, I study, prepare, and allow the Holy Spirit to God and direct my journey as I would, 
uh, assemble, you know, 10, 15 hours of, of prayer and, uh, and study and, 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 and preparation and, and delivering a message for you. And, 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 and at this moment, I, I, I had an opportunity to do this lesson all over or not, but I felt that the essence is exactly the same, whether the, the titles are different and you'll, you'll get the totality of this message as I did it three years ago. And I'll close it out with the connecting of, uh, of these two titles. But the essence that God gave me then is the same that I would like to share with you as well today. And I hope you get the essence as I'll, you know, you will see the title of loving one another and confident love throughout the lesson. But in essence, the same message that this uh, uh, our old apostle has uh, to share with us today. Yeah. So now to our Sunday School lesson text. This is a Sunday School lesson, Confident Love, and it's found in 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 14. And again, I'm using the New Living as our backdrop, and we'll begin at verse 11. And here John's writing this letter to this, these churches in Asia Minor. And, and, and here John writes in verse 11, this is the message you have heard from the beginning that we should love one another and i share with you that that was the lesson that, that that was the message that jesus gave these disciples at that last supper and then all of those disciples were supposed to use that as part of what the way that they were going to go forth and preach this gospel and and, and peter writes even in first peter 1 and 22 to love one another deeply from the heart that's what jesus is telling him that telling us all that will help us to navigate this life that we should love one another. Move on to the next slide to magnify this point, amen. That again, Jesus left this message to the apostles at that supper. And he says here in John 13 and 34, a new commandment I give it to you, that ye love one another as I have, have loved you, that you also love one another. Love like Jesus loved. That's what he wants these disciples to do. And that's what he conveys to us. This love, not sin. Amen? Let's move on. The Sunday school lesson is confident love. And John, again, is writing to these, these, these churches in Asia Minor and to, and to this church in Ephesus. And, and, and here he writes in, in verse 12 that we must not be like Cain. And I share you the story about Cain, who belonged to the devil, Satan, and he killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had uh, been doing what was evil, that Cain was entertaining this evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous, and he uh, was not really happy with what was going on. He had these feelings, and I'll multiply those, and i magnify those in the next cell but there's this this fight of, of this right and wrong this yin and yang that we're always torn with of doing what was right and doing what is wrong and and we and we as as human beings in this world we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers of this dark age that they're all trying to tor tear us to go in the opposite direction that god wants us to go and that's the problem that cain had with abel let's move on The Cain is a good example of this failure to love. That Cain chose this hate. That, 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 that Cain had this envy. His brother had brought a, a, a this first fruit offering, and he did not bring a first fruit offering. He brought an offering from what he did with his own hands. And and then God said it was not a it was not sufficient, and and he was disobedient. And God had already had a conversation with Cain. And, and, and if you read the text there, I think in Genesis chapter four, that it says that God is speaking to Cain. And he says, if you do what is right, you won't, won't you be accepted? That's what he's telling Cain. But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door, is chasing you down and it desires to have you, but you must rule over this sin. That's what God told this Cain, but he was disobedient. He didn't listen to the word of God and his pride that, that he made this stuff and he made these fruits and vegetables and stuff that he they'd done from the crop and he wanted to give it to God and God said it was not sufficient. He wanted something better. 
and he was disconnected himself from his brother and disconnected from everything else and he got in his head and he was chasing after and he was listening to the words from satan and hate and the sin of what encompassed him that's what happens when you have envy and disobedience and pride and you disconnected you get hate and sin amen that's what john writes to us to share with us along our journey today amen So this confidence love, John again writing in chapter 3, verse 13. And so don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if this world hates you. Surprise, your Christian people hate you. you know, people know that. They're always making jokes and everything about us. Amen. Don't be surprised what John tells us Christians to know. It's magnified next line. So even Jesus, the religious leaders, they hated Jesus, right? Because the people favored him over those religious leaders. They thought they were all that in a bag of chips. And they thought they were the ones who everybody knew who they were. And Jesus came and, 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 they, and, and they all, the crowds were following him. And they were too envious. And he, and he told them the truth that you guys are vipers. You guys are, are making my father's house a den of thieves. And you guys are, 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 are just not following the word of God. You're making up stuff on yourself. And they hated Jesus because he told them the truth. So be prepared for hate. They even hated Jesus. That's what John tells us. Amen. So I don't know about you. you no, know, when I, I along this just preparing for this lesson, uh, this lesson feels like this old preacher. And you know, we have uh, people who have this uh, wisdom, and they're there, and uh, and and, and they, they tell you about. They want to tell you these stories, and that's what it seems like that John is is now doing for us. That here he is, this old preacher. That all of the other disciples are not are dead, and he is now been thrown in the island of Patmos and, 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 and he is writing these letters back to the, the churches in Asia Minor because this old preacher that he just want to drop some knowledge on us and drop some knowledge on those people of that era and we can now glean from what he's dropping on us that, he, that just like that King Solomon that all the people in the region they came around to hear this wisdom from God from, from King Solomon John feels to me like that same old preacher that can preach up a storm because he has this wisdom that he's had that now this all this time has passed some 50 almost 60 years have passed and John has seen a lot and now he's writing these letters to these 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 churches and 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 he's writing the gospel of John and he will ultimately write uh he will ultimately describe the, the 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 book of revelation as well this is what I feel when I read and then when I study this lesson, I hope you get the sense as we end these last texts there, that John just want to drop some knowledge on us. I hope you can glean from what John tells us in these last few slides as we move on to close this lesson. Amen. So this confident love in verse 14, that, that that's this wisdom that John has given us, that love is the evidence of this new birth that we have. And he says, if we love our brothers and our sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death into life, right? If you love your brothers, then you guys have connection with each other. And he says that we're connected and we know that. But a person who has no love is still dead, right? You know, and you can tell sometimes by someone who is a Christian, they love you as people that don't just feel like they're not connected. And anyone who hates another brother or, uh, or sister is literally a murderer in, at heart, John writes. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. Again, that's this wisdom from John dropping these nuggets. Next slide. In verse 16, again, this confident love that, that John says in verse 16, that we know what love, real love is, right? Because Jesus gave up his life for us. That was the real love. He said that greater, no greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends, and Jesus did that. And so we ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. That's what John says, that that's what true love is. Again, this wisdom from this apostle John, this old preacher. Amen.
And verse 17, this confident love. If someone has enough money to live and sees his brother or sister in need but, sh but shows no comp compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Again, that's what John says. That's what love is, that we should love one another. Again, John is dropping wisdom on us. We have to have compassion for our brothers if we really have God's love. Next slide. So this confident love in, in, in verse 18. He says, Dear children, dear, ch dear children, let not merely uh, let's not merely say uh, we love each other. You know, people say that all the time. I love you, I love you, I love you. Let us show the truth by our actions. And then I've said this so many times in, in, in these lessons along this, this last few months that, uh, that if love is a verb, it is an action word. And, 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 and love re is an action word. It requires action. That I cannot say that I love you and I do not have any corresponding uh, uh, relationship to that love. If I if I if I say that I'm that I'm uh, that you're my 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 wife or woman or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever the relationships are along this journey, but you have to have action if you have this love. Let us show the truth by our action. That's the confidence that we have in this love. And John again is trying to give us these nuggets from this old preacher. Amen. This confident love in verse 19. And our actions will show that we belong to the truth. Because of these actions, we will have confidence when we stand before God. John is telling us that when we stand in this in the, in the, in the, in the end of our days, that if we show this, this love, we can be confident in the end of these days. You magnify with this next slide. So this is a cell that I've shared so many times that at the end of days that we all flesh will stand before a holy and righteous God. And we will give account for what we've done in these bodies. And we will be judged accordingly in what we have done. And John says to us in that, in that verse that he says that we could have confidence not, not by what we have done, not by the works of our own efforts, but by our relationships. And that's that whole thing about being abiding and being remaining, being connected to God. And, and that's what he says, that we can have confidence in this moment. Amen. Next slide. This confident love in verse 20. And, and even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. That God, he knows everything about everything that we're going through that that john is trying to drop some more uh um intellectual knowledge on, of, uh, on us and he says that 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 we should not feel guilty because our, our our feelings should not define us because god knows everything about us and and when we encounter certain things i share with you in the backdrop of this don't tell god about how i uh, don't tell god how big your storms are Tell your storms how big your God is. That we need to flip that script and now and recognize that God is in control and He knows everything about what we're going through. And 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 John is trying to tell us that 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 we should have confidence and love that God loves us. All we have to do is ask Him; He will provide our needs. Amen. Let's move on. This confident love in verses twenty. 1 through 22 and these are key verses for our text this fellowship in god love means the reassurance of these answered prayers and and here god says and I, I john writes to these churches in in asia minor and he says dear friends don't feel guilty don't feel inadequate don't feel that you don't live up to it when we come to god we can come to god with bold confidence. And I think that's what the enemy wants us to not feel that we are even worthy to stand before a holy and righteous God and send our petitions to him. 
verse 22 and it says we will receive whatever from him whatever we ask because we obey him and to do these and do these things that please him that, 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 that Paul writes to the church in Hebrew to those Jewish believers and he says let us therefore come forward with boldness to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace for timely help that God will hear our prayers and answer our prayers and we can boldly go to the throne of grace when Jesus died on that cross the cross the veil was ripped and the, the the veil was rent in the temple and it was rent from top to bottom to give us access to Almighty God we no longer have to go through a priest we can boldly go through the throne of grace and make our petitions known to Almighty God and because we are his ch child that he will hear our prayers and he would answer our prayers and and John has stepped by to tell you today that we should have this confident love and rem and don't feel guilty when we send our prayers up to God we should do it with bold confidence the word of God for the people of God let's move on amen this confident love in verse 23 and this is the commandment we must believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ that is what Jesus that he is the Redeemer he is the one who gives us connection with Almighty God he's those power source that we plug into our truth and plug in our redemption plug into our joy plug into our hope plug in into our destiny plug into our future and we love one another just as he commanded us Again, that we have, we must believe in this Jesus, and we stay on this earth long enough for that to occur. Amen. Let's move on. And verse twenty-three, this confidence, love, or verse twenty-four. I'm sorry. Uh, this uh, and those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with Him. That is that whole abiding that we started with, that the we abide and remain in love, keep these commandments, and, and, and you stay connected, you abide. That's what he wants us to do, that, that, that John is trying to say that we have this confident love. If we, amain, we, um, we abide, we remain in this love, we remain in the love for God, we remain in the love for, for, uh, for our, our fellow man, and keep these commandments, and, and we share, and we would lay down our life for our, our fellow believers. And we will have to feel this confidence in the future when we stand before a holy and righteous God. And we know he lives in us because the Holy Spirit he gave us lives in us. That the temple, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit of all. Mighty God, that he no longer lives in, in houses made by man. That the Holy Spirit now a peace rely, resides in each one of us. And we feel the power of all the gifts that the Holy Spirit embeds in with us that we're able to do and, and, and move and operate by the power of Almighty God. This is our, our last verse of Scripture. Let's move on to close this lesson. This, this powerful old preacher is preaching to us and leaving us and writing this letter that we can have this confident love. Amen. Going into our future. Amen. And again, this old preacher, this old man, John, that's probably now near in his late 80s or maybe even 90 years old, that he dropped by to tell you. And again, he's given, God has given me this word to share with you as well. That dropping some knowledge on us, that he's dropping some knowledge on us. And I hope you can grab a hold of something that was said today that, that takes you into your end of your days. You can apply it to every day. That we need to stay connected to God and love one another. That's what this word is saying. That's what John says. That's what Jesus says. And, and our life has changed because we've had this encounter with this Jesus. And because we've had this encounter with Jesus, that, that the sin that we that we that we were we were all going 100%, 99, 100 miles an hour in that direction. And now we've changed and gone this other way. That, and John is saying that the sin is not in us, that we cannot live in the space of, of, of just sin and sin and sin and not being convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we now have this power, the fruits of the Spirit, these, these gifts of the Spirit are now residing in us. We can ask Almighty God for anything, and we can do some fantastic, amazing, incredible things if we stay connected to that power. And those disciples did some amazing and phenomenal things, and they 
took it all to the grave and they stood boldly proclaiming the gospel. And, 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 and John is telling us we need to drop the pride and the envy. Don't be like Cain and we should love everyone and don't fall into the trap that Cain did. Stay connected to God, stay connected to the church, stay connected to the word, stay connected to our friends and family. And remain in this love, this love that Jesus said that he saw, he talked at that last supper and keep those commandments that he has to the end of our days. And if we do this and we live this life that this preacher Johnny, he, he did, he gave us today, we should feel confident that this love that this love that John shared with us today will get you into eternity. That's the word of God for the people of God. This old preacher left us a great word today. I hope you got something from this message. Next slide. And this is our final cell. Again, a lesson to titles, but the same essence that this great man leaves us with this amazing wisdom about this love and having this confident love, this love that he shared and gave us some tremendous examples that he says that this love that he's speaking about will get you into eternity. That is the essence where I left you. And my prayer that something you gain this week that you learn along our journey and strengthen your faith, the Lord provides all your needs, you learn something worthy of sharing. So in the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray and ask these things always. In his name, we do pray and say and ask. Amen. Thanks much for your time.